Hey, a special good afternoon, everybody. Welcome into the Sports Fanatic News NHL Team Preview Show as we will be previewing Columbus today, joined by three special guests for the very first time, as we're joined by Peyton on Peyton on the radio, Steel Flyers from SteelFlyers.com, and Steve, a.k.a. Pirlo Wisdom from SteelFlyers.com as well, and Pirlo's Wisdom YouTube channel and Pirlo's NHL pal. So let's get right into Columbus they are always an interesting team because they're one of the scrappiest teams. They take the persona of their head coach, John Tortorella, every year and get the most out of any fourth liner on the planet, basically. Um, so just initial thoughts we'll start with, and I'll let Peyton go first. What are your initial, say, two thoughts on Columbus uh, when you think of their team? Um, I, I think of a team that, is definitely kind of carried by their coach and John Tortorella. He does a really great job with this Columbus Blue Jackets team. It's also followed by their great defensive core uh, with Zachary Rowenski, Seth Jones, and just the rest of the guys there. It is a really good defensive team with some other players mixed in there with Pierre Locke Dubois. Uh, and Bjork Strand, who's been having some great breakout seasons. Uh, this Columbus Blue Jackets team, they've been definitely taking the slow approach, and especially when they got pulled apart by Pinard and Bobrovsky and Duchesne and many other players leaving the team. Um, I think Kukalainen has done a great job kind of maintaining the team, especially bringing in Max Domi this offseason. This team is going to look really fun, especially in this little bit of a a weaker central division where they could easily slip into that third, fourth spot in the division. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. And you're right spot on. They were tied for third in the league in defensive numbers last year. Their issue is offensive numbers, which was mm -hmm. down 27th uh, in the league. But uh, Pirlo, I'll go to you next. Um, what are your initial thoughts on the Columbus Blue Jackets when you just first think of their team? Uh, it's it's normal. It's every year. I mean, on paper, this team never should have been making the playoffs the last two, three years. Mm -hmm. just, they just don't have the players on paper to be making the playoffs. Wierenski and Jones, of course, that being, as uh, Peyton already mentioned, would be the two that I would say go against that theory. Is That is an incredible top two. But besides that, it's a pretty nondescript group. I mean, even Pierre-Luc Dubois would not be a number one on a lot of teams. Uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand can pot 20 to 25 goals. He wouldn't be a number one winger on most teams. This team is going to get by by an incredible system that's in place, uh, being able to play the game in, at a, uh, in a, a way that most teams don't know how to counteract. Nobody understands energy more than the Columbus Blue Jackets, and they will do whatever they have to do. Slow things down, ice the puck, uh, uh, have a compete level that is over the top to accomplish winning. Uh, even Elvis Morzlikens and, and, and Junus Corposalo put up some decent numbers, but neither one of those guys are probably going to be number ones on most teams in the NHL. So... Like usual, what I think is going to happen is what always happens is they will make the playoffs, even though they probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes um, <laughs> some sense. Uh, they do have on their defense, of course, they just recently added a former flyer, Michael Delzato, to a professional tryout, I think on Christmas Day, actually. So good Christmas present for Michael. Um, but they have David Savard still until they potentially trade him, who's a... Solid stay-at-home defenseman, pretty much, that can still move the puck a little bit. Gavink Gavrinkov came up and impressed, and you have him now for a good contract for three years. Um, but their guys, they rely on, like I said, when Peyton, <clears throat> when Peyton gave his answer, guys like Harrington and Kukun come up, and they turn them into better defensemen than I think some teams might be capable of turning such players into just because of how good they are at mentoring guys along uh, over there in Columbus. But Steele, what are your initial thoughts on the Columbus Blue Jackets when you first think of their team? I'm going to have to touch on basically what both Peyton and, and Perlow said. When, when they have a system in place that the coach has put into place and they've been able to get players to match that system. 
Okay. So if they need to ice the puck, they can ice the puck. If they need to play a little bit more up front and do a little bit more for checking, they can do that. We saw how they were able to take it to Tampa Bay last year in the playoffs. Okay. And I, I think with the addition of Max Domi into this whole mix, Columbus Blue Jackets is a little bit one of the older teams historically, or you know, kind of going on right now. They, they their their average forward age is twenty nine, and their average defense age is twenty five, right? So they're not the youngest team out there, but they got a lot of veterans on this team here that play well for the coach. Okay, and when I initially look at Columbus, I feel that number one that they have good players that are playing the system that Tortorello has. And I also agree that with what Perlo said, I don't think their goalies are number one goalies on any other team, but this team plays to what situation they need to play in. Okay. And I also agree too. I look for them to be in the playoffs, just not sure which fourth or third. Eh, That's my initial. Gotcha. Yeah, that definitely, uh, Makes some sense. I mean, I think they're a team that always overperforms. Like you said, their veterans definitely do play for their coach. And I think that's why Columbus has always been a team that picks out players to keep around that really buy into the culture. They remind you of, for big uh, baseball people too, a team like the Tampa Bay Rays or the Oakland Athletics, who are not the biggest market team, just like the Jackets, but always keep those good cultural guys in house, so that they brought Savard in, fit in right away. Yeah, they brought Savard in uh, during the 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 uh, whole trade and everything they did with the with the uh, with the draft and everything, right? So, and eh, you know, look, could be an interesting season, that's for sure. Especially with what Peyton said and being them in the Central Division, it's there's not that. I mean, there's only really maybe Columbus and a couple other teams in that division. I think are going to be yeah gonna be there. Tampa, Carolina, Dallas, those are probably the odds on favorites. Right. And Columbus, I would I would start. throw yeah. into that. With Columbus, yeah, yeah as the top four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's coming in for that division. Um, I think they made some solid pickups, too, because another veteran that's probably going to buy right into the Columbus culture, which I think is the main reason they picked them up, is Miku Koivu, uh, who they picked up, who might be their fourth-line center now with Liam Foody uh, coming up and probably feeding, see what I did there, um, on the NHL talent. Um, (laughs) But uh, we're starting now. The reason I segue to him is I want to ask somebody about their thoughts on uh, Liam Foody, and whoever wants to take that is able to take that. um, Who wants to pick up the Liam Foody question? Whoever has the most information on him can roll with that one. I just love him. I think he's like his speed and the way he, uh, he could he could be a twenty five goal scorer or more in this uh, in the playoffs. Uh, he used he learned how to utilize his speed very very well. Up until that year, the problem was he was very fast, but he would end up out of position because of his speed. But uh, last year in the playoffs, he 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 certainly uh, had found a way to be able to be in the right place all the time to carry the puck around the d- defenders and drive to the net and uh, I just I'm really excited to see what he does this year because uh, he was very impressive in the playoffs I mean he was uh, a number one I, draft pick you know what I mean in 2018 so 18th overall so yeah um, it's this is going to be what the third year now so you're going to see his progression should be a little bit you know uh, coming around here, he's 20 years old now. He's been playing a little bit. He's over. He's six foot. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, he's going to be one of those guys that they're going to probably lean on a little bit in Columbus. Yeah, especially for this year. Like he's a London Knights draft pick. He he's come from a very good program there in the OHL. He's done a lot of good stuff, and he's been a talked about player for a while there in Columbus. So especially with this depth chart there in Columbus, he could play almost anywhere up the lineup, depending on how Tortorella likes you. And if you can be that situational player that he needs you to be, he could potentially fit great. And they need future centermans. They really do. They need future centermans, especially with Pierre Locke Dubois. He could play the wing if you need him to be. So it's a great prospect from Liam Pudi. 
Yeah, and he made uh, Columbus pick some well because picking a guy 18 and having him make a playoff impact only mm-hmm. a couple years later uh, is a very good testament to your scouting department. Um, so I think also we have to look at their team. They got another guy, um, Chichankov, um, um, uh, Chanikov, excuse me, also had 70 points in the minors. He's 19, a little ways away. And then Andrew Peak is going to be up this year on defense and is likely going to be one of the next defenders they groom into becoming part of that culture there in Columbus. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on a Peak as a defense prospect who's more of a defensive guy with some 15 point capability in the AHL level. What are your thoughts on him? I love Andrew Peak. I think this guy is going to, he's a real big defenseman. Six foot three is kind of the way that Columbus plays. He's a big guy for them. Um, he played great there down in NCAA. He puts up points too. That's a big thing for Andrew Peak. He's, he's able to put up points, but he's also able to play really good defensively. He was playing down there for Notre Dame, uh, 24 points uh, in 40 games in his uh, sophomore season there. Um, He's a great looking defenseman. And especially he put up 16 points in his first year in the AHL. Not a lot of people do that. Not a lot of young defensemen are able to produce like that when jumping into the AHL or the NHL. So this is a great looking defensive prospect for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And it frees up a bit of cap space too, right? Right now, like you could get rid of David Savard next year and you could throw in Andrew Peak into that defense core potentially next year. And not just that, you have Gabriel Carlson as well uh, in that defense core who's been playing a, a little bit as well, who can potentially go full time this year for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Yeah, um, I also I don't know why I said Peak. Yeah, Carlson's the stand up like Ryan Lindgren defensive defenseman. Mm-hmm. I mixed two of those guys up in my head but yeah he can have more offensive upside the problem is with columbus how much offensive upside does tortorella allow his defenseman to have because he enjoys them getting back on their high horse as quick as possible as well um uh, i they do well in his system it's just i think some of let me put it this way i think some offensive defensemen will probably go off in other systems when they're allowed to be more offensive where in torch you have to be very good at balancing yeah. The, you look at Zach Rowenski. Zach Rowenski, I think Tortorella, like, he's really done a great job with Zach Rowenski. You look at the guy, he had 20 goals this season as a defenseman. You don't really see that uh, from a lot of defensemen scoring 20 goals in a year. So I think Andrew Peak, if he plays to what John Tortorella does and he has a good defensive partner, you look at Garakov or Carlson Peak potentially play in a really good system alongside a really good defenseman and potentially put up maybe 20, 30 points, just like how Borwenski does. And I think it'll help them out a little bit, have that more offensive depth from your defensive core so you can be able to transition that puck a lot faster and maybe potentially get more goals from it. Because like we were saying from the top, Columbus doesn't have a very good goal scoring power of a team that's the biggest thing that they need to develop right now with Liam Foody that will help them tremendously and not just that Max Domi as well yeah Yeah, that's a that's a great point I was just going to say because that's what they're lacking they're lacking that scoring you know and that's why they brought in Max Domi you know what I mean and and to bring up Foody that 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 would be I mean he he had an impact in the playoffs okay and and with the depth that the team's going to need this year, I think he's going to be more of an impact going into this year because of the teams needing depth and things like that. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. uh, I would say um, what uh, as far as Peak, Peak is a really good example of why I think Columbus is the best um, draft and development team in the league. I I really do. Um, Peak is a really good example of that. He he was very defensive, a very defensive defenseman. When he first got drafted, that's what he was. But they have worked with him and progressed, and he's worked his butt off too, to be able to find offense out of his skill set. And uh, that's what I love about the Columbus Blue Jackets. They don't give up guys. They got guys like Tessier, who they drafted in the second round. You just mentioned Foodie, uh, Peak. They don't give up on them. 
and they continue working with them over and over and over again until they get it right. And Peak, it looks like Peak has now got it right, and he's ready to play. Um, it's it's a pretty amazing combination of coach and general manager there with Kekalainen, who was considered the Wayne Gretzky of scouting in Europe before they <laughs> signed him. And then, and then, like I said, I'm only, I, I think I haven't even come close to my 20 minutes of Tortorelli yet, that how much I love him. So it's a wonderful combination that works really well. And uh, it's a fun team to watch grow uh, as a organization for sure. Yeah. Um, they also had another youngster in a, Femstrom, who's doing good in the league on loan right now, come up and put up 20 when uh, he came up as a, a former fourth rounder from three years ago. So they do definitely go to your point of developing them well. Uh, he already put up 20 in 56 games as a uh, former fourth rounder. So that definitely shows good success for the future. And then Texier as a second rounder definitely came up and really showed himself um, when he first came up as well. So yeah, they definitely, I agree with you, do really well with picking them. Texier at 13 points in 36 games. So they got a pretty good future. It's more uh, how, where's everyone going to fit and how are they going to pair um, with each other's lines and uh, what? how much does Foodie move up the lineup? Because you figure coming into the season, Boone Jenner is probably still their second line center. So if Foodie really impresses will they just start them on the second line? Does anybody think that's actually a possibility or they'll play it more conservative and actually let him start on the third line? I don't know. I think they might let him start on the third line, at least to start. <clears throat> see how he see how he goes and see how things go and just see what happens. It's it's I think it's gonna be this. Once you get into that first ten or fifteen games and get rolling and see what kind of a like see what kind of streak he's getting on, see how he's playing, see if he's up on his skates. You know what I mean? And then, and then I think Tortorella will probably move him around. You know what I mean? That that's kind of where I'm 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 I just have that feeling. He he played very well in the playoffs and he did make an impact. And I think they want to kind of try to not, you know, throw him right to the wolves right away. Maybe they might want to, you know, kind of hold him back a little bit because they do like to develop their players and they don't want to put them in a situation where they could potentially be failing. You know what I mean? So I think they might put him on the third line. Now that's my take on it. Gotcha. Makes sense. I was just curious because they definitely could use a more, potent second line center Boone Jenner is definitely more of a third line center himself um nothing I think, against him he plays I think he's going to be in the top six right off the bat that's what I think okay well that'll probably be second line center if that's the case would probably depend if Atkinson's on the first line if Bjorkstrand's on the first line it'll probably be Cam and, and Mike with and, I'm not and sure depending on what's going on with Koivu too, depending on what's going on with Koivu too, that he might be. That's why I'm saying. That's why I think they might start him at as as the third line center. Yeah, I think Koivu might honestly just end up being their fourth line center. That just brings great leadership and uh, presence into the locker room and team. That's where I would have him slated yeah. coming in. Um, but. Yeah, they just have a lot of good prospects because we didn't even bring up a guy that might turn into a good fourth line or like a Matt Morton type. And they've got they developed Eric Robinson, who, if he doesn't get stupid penalties, can definitely be a very effective fourth liner because I don't want him hitting me. So um, that 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 can definitely become effective. And then. Dmitry Voronkov, their 20-year-old who did good in the um, KHL as well as the juniors last season, uh, just needs to improve his skating. Other than that, uh, he's another physical forward that will round and pound you around the uh, rink. So they got guys that are coming up that really remind you of those playoff-esque players as well that you need once you get to the playoffs that are going to go up against the tough guys of the other teams, especially when they're young. Uh, it's really good to have that because you can keep those guys around for cheap contracts. So leading in with that, what do you think is the depth of Columbus? Because in my opinion, I think it's pretty uh, vast. I'll start with Peyton on this one. What do you feel of their overall um, depth? 
I love their depth. Like you, you take a look at it. They brought in Mikhail Grigorenko, which we haven't even really got into very much. I didn't even really get very much into him, but he's put up some great KHL numbers, some great offensive numbers. And this could be a, a sleeper pick on everyone's list of being a guy that could really rip up the NHL for him coming back. Maybe he's more mature. Who knows? We'll have to see. He might start down in the, the third, fourth line spot. But if he's playing on the fourth line with Liam Foody and Benstrom, you take a look at the depth and then you add Robertson, you add Stinland, you add Gerby, you add uh, Zach Dolph. You got so many great young guys that could potentially jump into the roster. And like you were talking for prospects, they have an insane amount of great prospects career, uh, Kirill Marichenko from the KHL. He's been a great six foot three, huge Russian. Uh, they just picked up Yigur Ch- uh, Chernikov, uh, another big Russian there as well, who's been doing great in the KHL. Their depth is insane. Their prospect core is looking great there in Columbus and especially with this short game schedule, they need depth. You need as much depth as you possibly can. So you could swap in players that are swap out players that are tired, that need to be rested. It's it's great to have this amount of depth and amount of good depth and gritty depth too, because this depth is gonna help them a lot if they do make it to the playoffs. So uh, everything about Columbus is looking so far, not bad. They're definitely not the greatest looking team in the world, but talking about their depth, they got a great amount of depth. Yeah, they also have a pretty solid uh, goalie prospect in Danil um, Tarasov. I wanted to make sure I pronounced his name right. That's why I looked at it. But uh, he's he did good um, in Finland. Um, but since he's been in the K uh, for Salavat, he has in nine games a 189 goals against and a 933 save percentage. So if he can continue kind of going on that trend, uh, he's going to be right there with Elvis and, uh, well, if Corpy's still there at that point, uh, Jonas Corposalo um, competing for them in potentially a year or two. So they got him. They pick him good in general because he's a third round, former third round pick as well. So that just goes back to their scouting department and shouting them out. Uh, I guess the next question before we go into where we predict Columbus to be would be, who do you guys think is going to be their team leader this year? Who do you think will be the guy that steps up and leads the team in point um, this year and really takes the uh, crown there? I'll start with Steele on this one. Well, the first thing I wanted to say is this. I I really like the depth of Columbus and this this team in the last what two years three years they lost Panarin they lost Bobrovsky they lost yeah. all these guys and yet they were still able to make the playoffs in the last two years with those guys off the team. That's why I compare them to the A's and Rays because they do right. that all the time and then just make the play. The Rays just got rid of Blake Snell. They'll probably make the playoffs next year. Right. And the fact that they are still so far under the cap. Okay. They got like nine mil or something crazy like that. Um, is just goes to show you what kind of good coaching and general managing can do with a team and putting together the teams. Uh, as far as I think we're going to see, as far as like leadership is concerned, I think the room is already set in there with your leadership. But I think you might see a breakout from Max Domi. I, I just, something just, I just have a feeling about that guy. I don't know. <laughs> he, he just is, he's looking to prove. He's got a chip on his shoulder, right? He spent the last season or two in Montreal not doing real well you know what I mean and and he's gonna have a fresh start and he just seems like he's gonna be that I think he might have found a spot yeah he's still only in his mid-20s so if he really hits it now he definitely has a lot of time to really put together a very good career and who better to give him that shot than Tortorella yeah that that's for sure um Pirlo I'll go to you next for this uh if you have any comment on their depth and then just who you think is going to lead their team and take the crown uh, in points there. Um, points. I don't know. The Dubois will lead the team for sure. Uh, he is definitely their emotional leader and all of that, but points wise, I think it'll be 
Um, Wierenski again. I think Wierenski is going to have another great season. It's going to, he's going to keep on putting up points as long as he's in that, uh, given the opportunity. Um, they do most, they get a lot of their offense from their defense. Uh, it's the way they play. So it gives them an opportunity to be able to put up some decent points. Um, I, so yeah, I think emotional leader and, and like heart leader, it'll be Dubois, but Zachary Wawrenski, maybe this year get, will even, um, you know, get some more Norris, uh, votes, but, and then of course, Seth Jones, is a beast back there with them as well. So, so those are like the big leaders on this team, the ones that everybody follows. And uh, as far as what Steele says, Max Domi um, is going to get an opportunity to see what it means to be a two-way center in this league from uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. And uh, um, I think will take advantage of that and uh, become a lot better than he's shown so far as, in his career as, as well. Yeah, so for me, um, I absolutely love Pierre-Luc Dubois. I think this guy, he's a third overall selection. Not very many people talk about him because he's in a small town market. But just this past playoffs, he had 10 points in 10 games. He was a point per game. His first time in his career being a point per game in just about anything for the NHL, which is fantastic. This guy has done great. I think this year, uh, if he wasn't in the Tortorella scheme, it's like talking about Barzell. Barzell would put up... Way more offensive numbers if he wasn't in that defensive plan. And I think this year Dubois might step out of that shell a little bit. They need to. They need to get a little bit more of goal production going. And with the addition of Domi and if Foodie really starts jumping up into that lineup, you might see some more production out of Pierre-Luc Dubois. And I feel like Pierre-Luc Dubois will lead the team in points. I don't see by very much. I see by 35, 40 points. You're definitely not going to see a lot of points from the Columbus Blue Jackets. But I do see it around there. But I do see Pierre-Luc Dubois taking a huge step. If he does get signed here soon, he still doesn't have an official contract. But once he does, and hopefully he does here soon, because it's a very quick season, um, I think he'll lead the team this year for sure. Yeah, that all makes sense to me. For me, uh, looking at it from an outside, I've always uh, been a big uh, Max Domi guy too. And I think they might start him off on the wing to really see what it is like Pirlo said playing with. Dubois, that's how a lot of projections have him not at center, because that's why he shouted out Boone Jenner as the second. They're they're in they're in big trouble if they try that because it's the reason why he left Montreal. He will not play wing. That's the big thing. Well, he yeah, will but he not also did wing. not he also did not like playing less minutes. So you're going to play right. the most minutes on the left wing to Dubois. You're going to play less minutes on a second line with either Bjorkstrand and Nyquist or Atkinson and Nyquist. So it comes down to, do you want to have the most minutes or do you want to be the second line set? Well, if Tortorella gets him to play the wing, then you're going to hear me talk about Tortorella for another 20 minutes because that'll be... I mean, <laughs> it's, it's two organizations now that have traded him because he refuses to play the wing. So, right. Well, even if he uh, does play center, they do need a second line center, so that still wouldn't yeah. be a problem. Mm -hmm. Jenner's not. He's a third line center Liam Foody can play the wing if he needs to himself uh, to start his career to get going but I do think uh, Dubois will probably be their team leader in points but I do agree with Steele that I think Max Domi will have a very good season and probably be there with Rewinski, uh right behind uh, Dubois in the points lead I do think uh, like Pirlo said Foody will probably early on if not right away be in the top six that's just the way I think He's going to show up and show out quick enough yeah. to push up in a lineup that has a lot of solid quick skaters, but nobody that's a proven continuous scorer and points producer. Like Atkinson and Nyquist are not that. They're good players, but they're not that. So if Foodie comes up and really starts continuously producing, I think he could push ahead of guys like that or a Bjorkstrand who are good players, but just not a consistent producer. Um, so that's just the way I feel about that. But our wrap-up questions will be, of course, where we see this team finishing. So I'll go to a Peyton for this first. Where do we see the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Central Division, and what do you think has to happen for them to get to where you predict them? 
So I think this division, you really got like Tampa Bay, Carolina, and Dallas as your top teams. But even then, Dallas hasn't been a proven team. Yes, they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals, but depending on how Rick Bonus does in the regular season and how the aging affects Pavelski and all those other guys, there's a lot of things coming into the factor. But I do believe that Columbus will either finish in fourth or third, and they will be making it into the playoffs most likely. They need to continue that defensive dominance that they showed last year. They need to have Merge Lincoln's uh, pull off another great year like he uh, did last year. Same with Corpus Allo. They also need a bit more offense. You're kind of going into a division where you only really have two big goal-scoring teams in Carolina and Tampa Bay. A lot of the other teams, they don't got a lot of goal scoring power. So you could easily see this Columbus Blue Jackets team dominate this division almost. Tampa Bay, they have they beaten up Tampa Bay a lot over the past little bit. They beat them two years ago in the playoffs um, in a uh, uh, an underdog series. Um, Carolina as well. Carolina has shown to be shut down pretty easily by Boston. So, so Columbus could even potentially take this series over if they have goal scoring. They need to have Pierre-Luc Dubois and like uh, Steele and Perlow were saying, they need to have Max Domi performing as well. And if they get that offensive going and they're able to continue that defensive dominance, the Columbus Blue Jackets, without a doubt, will be a really good team in the Central Division. Yeah. Well, the big thing, um, I think, for them, too, is their power play, I think getting a Domi and having Foodie have more of an impact this year is going to move that up from the 27th mm-hmm. place in the league. And I think that might be a sneaky reason. Well, obviously, why they bring back in a Gregor Ranko who showed the skill in the KHL. That's a sneaky reason for him as well, like you pointed out earlier, Peyton. But also a sneaky reason why I think they bring in a veteran like Koivu, because he's not going to give you much offensive ability on five on five, but he's an experienced power play guy from all of his years with Minnesota. So if you want to just start a veteran on the second power play line, he's definitely not a bad guy to have with the two young Mm -hmm. forwards and then potentially another forward on defense. If you want to match up a defender with a guy to blast it from the point or however you do it there, either way, I think they're set up a lot nicer for the power play this year, in my opinion. But um, Pirlo, I'll go to you next on this. Where do you think they're going to finish in this central division? And what do you think is going to get them there? I think it'll likely be third, but nothing would surprise me. I always underestimate Columbus. Uh, um, what's going to get them there is they're, they, they're, they brought in Koivu for one reason, for a lot of reasons, but he's older, but he was always a warrior. And what, what, why Columbus wins a lot of games is Tortorella brings a warrior mentality to his players. And they win because they beat you. They just beat you any way they can. It's like they'll bite, they'll scratch, they'll do whatever they got to do. And they hate <laughs> you. They hate mm. you. Yeah. They go on the ice and they hate you for the time that they're on the ice. And that <laughs> that's really why they win. So could they beat Carolina? Absolutely. Um, could they beat out Tampa Bay? Sure. Um, I guess the only reason why I would say third is because I think Carolina has a coach that's much the same in Brindamore. So, you know, um, and they have a better uh, team on paper. So I'm going to go third. And I agree. I think Foodie's going to play the wing, actually. I think that's where he's going to play in his career more more than, than likely. And uh, play with Domi. Um, I think I'm really going to be uh, really excited to see how many points he can put up this year. I think he could really surprise. Um, also, we mentioned Greg Aranko. Like I mentioned before, Kekalainen is the Wayne Gretzky of uh, European scouting, as according to them. And for him to bring in a guy like that, you can almost be rest assured he's going to be way better than you thought. And if that's the case, this team could be a real beast this year. That's for sure. And Foodie playing with Domi, I saw Steel yeah. pointing with that. That'll definitely help your point of him <laughs> taking off this year. Because that's a great segue because that's exactly what I was going to talk about is those two guys playing together because that gives them that creative push that gives them that spark because yes they are warriors and they're there and they're going to wear you down they're going to beat you down but you need some guys that can score 
Okay, and I think that Max Domi is going to be given that opportunity. And I think if he, even if he doesn't play with Foodie, uh, he, those two players I think are going to have to make an impact on this team offensively to in order for them to move ahead. I, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a wing here, and I'm going to say they're going to fight with Carolina for the lead in the Central. Um, I, I think Carolina is going to be a little bit more improved this year in some areas, but I also think that Columbus is going to be improved as well too. And they learned their lesson against Tampa Bay in the playoffs and they went out and took care of some of that. And if they need to, they have the cap space to sign who they need to sign. Okay. So I think they're going to be fighting it out for the first or second, I think in the central. And I think because of the Max Domi and even the Savard adding that, and 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 with Foodie and and throwing all those guys into the mix and sprinkle in a little bit of Tortorella system, yeah, first or second in the division, that's where I'm calling Columbus. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all good. We had third, third, and then first or second. For me, I would say, I would I had them more at second. I think it's going to be a three horse race, mainly yeah, jam between Tampa, Columbus, and Carolina. With if Dallas could be right there in the top four to compete for the top three, too. I think that just depends. I need to see how they perform in a full season with their head coach and not just in a very impressive playoff run. You have to see how he comes back to coach in the regular season. But that about wraps it up for us on this video. Um, So please check out Peyton on Peyton on the radio on his YouTube channel, Pirlo at Pirlo Wisdom, Steals, Steel Flyers. And you can check out a lot of our information. Hopefully Peyton's will be up there soon at steelflyers.com. This has been the Sports Fanatic News Columbus Blue Jackets team preview. Have a great, safe, and pleasant week, everyone, and enjoy your holidays. Peace out.